Welcome everybody to this week's bi-weekly community call. This is our first call of 2023. We hold these calls every other week on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. UTC. Um, today I have quite a few things to go over. Uh, the, on the agenda for today's call, some of the announcements, I have some timelines for Nexus Mutual V2 releases, and I've got some information on upcoming claim events for FTX, BlockFi, and Gemini Earn. On the update side of things, um, Hugh was able to join us for the weekly update from the foundation, but he's passed on some notes for me to share. I'll go over the week in review of cover sales and active coverage by cover type. There is a WNXM buyback discussion active on the forum, so I'll provide a summary there, and we can discuss that on the call as well. And then I'll provide the latest update on the M11 credit WEATH pool. Um, after that, we'll have our open forum where anybody can share or ask any questions or talk about anything that wasn't covered on the call. I will jump right into the announcement section and start talking about some timelines for Nexus Mutual V2. In the month of January, we've got a couple things that we'll be working on. Um, one of them is an updated brand release. In the month of January, we will also have the launch of the nexusmutual.io website. So. We've got an updated website that we'll be launching as well. For the updated brand, we've done quite a bit of work here. We have a new logo or a refreshed updated logo, new colors, new typography, and we've also got brand guidelines for anybody that works with us just on tone of voice, how we display uh, the graphics that we have in our brand uh, and media kit. So there's a, a lot to look forward to there. Uh, I really like the, uh, the new brand updates the new logo and the colors, it's very refreshing. And all of that has gone on to inform the new website. So in the new website, of course, we're showcasing Nexus Mutual V2 and the new brand. This website is going to be the launch pad that gets you either into the user interface or to the new documentation or any of the resources that you might want to access for Nexus Mutual V2 are going to be on that website. It's designed to increase awareness, drive engagement, and educate new users or existing users about V2. This, we're hoping, is going to see an uptick in site traffic, and we're going to be using this as our publishing platform and moving away from Medium. So we'll have a blog right on the website. That's where we'll be posting updates and sharing announcements on that blog. We'll still keep our standard newsletter. That's going to be where we're hosting all of our information. So those two releases are going to happen in the month of January. And in the first week of February, Nexus uh, Mutual V2 rollout begins. You know, we'll have all of the, uh, the standard features, buying cover and everything. But the big one for the rollout is partial claims functionality for the upcoming claims that we're going to have in the month of February. This will be pretty important. Of course, we'll have comms around different things like migrating your cover. Really, this is only something that needs to be done if a claim is being filed and it's very easy to do. It's right in the, the claims UI. So there's a lot happening. There's a lot that um, all the DAO and foundation teams are working on but there's definitely a, a lot to look forward to. So this is the main focus for everybody on either a DAO team or within the foundation as well. So it's pretty exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to all of these things. I think you should too. And look for more information in the newsletters in the coming weeks about the updated brain launch and the updated website launch as well. In the next couple editions of the newsletters, um, I'm going to be doing a spotlight on features in V2. In the week of the 16th, I'll talk about the tokenized cover features. The week of the 23rd, I'll talk about some of the features that come with staking. And the first week of February, uh, as claims begin to happen, I'll do in, uh, an overview of the claim assessment features as well, just so people can get acquainted over time with some of the new functionality and features we're gonna have in V2. Hopefully this is a way to get some insight on the upcoming release. I want to include some broader topics too, like how V2 furthers the long-term mission of the mutual. I'll cover uh, pricing and staking mechanics and uh, quite a few other things as well. Look out for that in the newsletters. Of course, on the community calls, I can highlight some of these features too and answer any questions in Discord over time as well. Um, just as an update on some of the upcoming claim events in February, uh, we're going to have claims coming in for FTX, BlockFi, and Gemini Earn, where people have actually experienced a loss and need to file a claim. Just like I typically do, two weeks ahead of each event, I will uh, have a how to prepare for FTX claims, BlockFi claims, and I'll share that overview with everyone um, so that they can gather any documents or just get ready for claims filing. Next week, I'm going to share information on the off-chain verification process. 
So if you've got a custodial account um, and you're planning to file a claim, you'll just need to verify that you own the account. Um, this is going to be an off-chain process that is confirmed via email. Uh, it'll be relatively simple, but this is just one way to prevent um, fraudulent claims, somebody trying to buy an account from somebody else and, and file a claim, things along those lines. So we'll have more information on that next week. And then for partial claims, um, if anybody needs help determining the loss amount that they want to file for their claim, all members are happy to help with that. In the DAO forums category, uh, you can start a conversation about your particular claim and just use the claims tag. You can share some information there. And if you need help determining you know, what the partial claim amount that you should use when you file a claim, um, I'm happy to help with that. And I'm sure everybody else is as well. So you can take advantage of that. For the claims that are coming up on the 6th of February, that's when the FTX International Claims will start. Um, on the 9th of February, on that Thursday, BlockFi claims and FTX US claims can begin to be filed. And for those who have Gemini custody cover and were affected by Gemini Earn, on the 14th of February, those claims can start to be filed as well. Again, I'll have more information on this as these events get closer, but just want to give everyone an update for things to expect. And if people have questions in Discord again or on Twitter, really anywhere, uh, just tag me and I'm happy to help answer any questions. I know I've also seen people asking about proof of loss and FTX claims since the website was taken down shortly after the exchange collapsed. So I've done some digging and I've looked into this. Um, there are some great great resources out there too. I've shared some in the thread for today's call. One of them is from Wasi Lawyer on Twitter. Um, really great accounts. He has an entire fax page about the FTX bankruptcy. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out if you're interested. For those who did not download their account statements or if you didn't have, you know, if you don't have any proof of loss, if you didn't take any screenshots of your account balance, the best solution for you ahead of claims filing is to contact Kroll Restructuring Administration, LLC. They're the ones that are handling the FTX bankruptcy case. Um, their contact form is right on their website. I've shared that in the thread for today's call too. You can request confirmation that you had an account on either FTX International or FTX US and a record of the value of the assets or what assets that you held in your account. Um, if you can get confirmation of that, that's something you can use to verify your account. And then you can use that as well to demonstrate um, the loss amount. So claims assessors can determine what the loss amount is if you've lost funds, if you plan to file a claim. So I recommend anybody that needs to do that to contact uh, Kroll Restructuring as soon as possible ahead of claims filing. I'll also put an announcement uh, across the different social channels uh, later today on this, just to give people a heads up. I'll also have this in the newsletter as well. So hopefully this will be a solution that works for folks who weren't able to download any record. Yeah, so Butter, on your question, is it worth contacting sexes like FTX directly to, to determine true losses? There really isn't anyone to contact. So Kroll would be the people to contact, um, but if we don't know who is filing, you know, who plans to file claims, we really can't um, do anything there. So really, it's up to an individual to reach out to them, um, since they are the ones handling the restructuring. There isn't, uh, on a lot of these, when there's a bankruptcy case, there isn't any one figurehead. The people that used to run the exchange really are no longer in charge, because now there's a, a separate en entity handling the bankruptcy filing. So it's not as clear cut as reaching out because there really is no one to reach out to. And in some cases, with extreme cases like FTX, um, there's really no access to records that are readily available to anybody except for these people handling these restructurings. So, um, yeah, it, from um, the mutual's point of view, there really isn't anyone to contact and we're not sure who's going to be filing claims. So um, there's not really a great solution for us. So hopefully this solution works for people. Um, if anybody has any questions on this too, feel free to reach out. Um, hoping to be as helpful as possible here and that this can be a way for people to get proof of loss ahead of claims filing. Um, are there any questions on anything I've covered so far before I... So sure, I mean, we could know there, there is one person who has access to that information but um, requesting that information 
without knowing who's filing claims, um, I think is probably an invasion of someone's privacy. And also that's really up to, I think an individual to find out that information. Um, so again, this would be the same way that it would be done through us. I think that if someone from the foundation tried to reach out and get this information, the response would probably be, you have to be the individual that's requesting. Um, so that would be my assumption, but this is something that an individual has to do ahead of claims filing. Um, and again, I'll, I'll make announcements on this. But um, before I move on to the foundation update, are there any other questions um, either in chat or in, uh, in the voice channel? If not, I will move on. So like I said, Hugh is not able to join us this week. Um, he is out of office this morning, but he did pass along some notes for me to share. So on the foundation side, everything is coming together and moving along for the V2 rollout that's going to happen in that first week of February. Um, everybody is preparing and getting ready. Uh, the focus right now for the engineers is the staking UI and migration. Um, these two things are the top focus. That includes working with distributors like Armor, iTrust, and Bright Union to get them ready for the uh, rollout of V2. Um, so if there's any covers they need to migrate or migrating stakes, that's something that we're um, that the foundation is working on with them. The foundation teams are heads down preparing for the early February launch. Um, they're looking for no distractions and they're very focused on point, getting everything ready so that we can have a smooth transition ahead of claims filing. Um, I'll have um, plenty of comms coming from the DAO side on this as well, but the foundation teams are uh, making great progress from, from what I've seen so far. More broadly, the product team has been working on a DNO product, which is going to be a post V2 launch. Um, here, Hughes talked about this on past calls, but a director's and officer's product that's focused for um, DAOs or people who are contributing to DAOs. So this is going to be more of a focused post V2 when we have that functionality. Um, and there's been more interest, uh, Hughes noted, from traditional insurers because capital and traditional insurance is in short supply. So they're looking to crypto as a potential source of capital to underwrite coverage and act as reinsurance. So we are in a great position, Hugh said, um, but this is somewhat of a, a macro dynamic that we would need to execute on. Um, one important thing he's noted is to um, be mindful of the amount of capital we have. And um, he has a note here that uh, he doesn't want to give up too much capital for buybacks to potentially pursue um, some of this interest from traditional insurers. So these are the updates I have from the foundation. Um, from my perspective, again, everyone is focused on V2 and getting things out and ready for February. So those who can file claims, are able to do so and we'll have that partial claims functionality to um, make sure that people who are filing claims are paid for their loss and um, aren't overcompensated uh, as we've had that issue with v1 because we didn't have the partial claims functionality um, before i move on to a review are there any questions on any of the updates i've shared from the foundation side okay if not, I will move on to a review of the cover sales from the last week. All of this data is sourced from the Nexus Tracker, and you can find that in the thread for today's call, or you can go directly to the nexustracker.io site. In the last week, we sold uh, roughly 20.8 million in cover and earned $69,630 in cover fees. Some of the larger cover buys that we saw were for Curve, Euler, Yearn Finance, Aura, Nested, Balancer V2, and Gearbox V2. Nested V2, of course, has been buying coverage for their TVL for the past several months. I think it's been about six or seven months now. 
Um, since Aura's been listed, we've seen consistent large cover buys coming in. Balancer V2, um, larger cover cover buys coming in probably after their um, announcement and disclosure of a vulnerability that they were mitigating. And Curve is just kind of an evergreen protocol that we see um, significant demand for over time. And then, of course, other cover buys coming in for GMX, Aave, Maker, Liquidity, and Compound V2. So um, we're seeing a lot more longer-term cover buys. So the, the fees that are earned per individual cover buy have been larger just because people have been buying longer-term covers. Even yesterday, there were pretty significant cover buys, and I believe there was about 12 or 13 million in cover sold just yesterday and about 50,000 in cover fees that were earned um, just in the last day. So, uh, But for last week, we've seen pretty significant cover buys. Great way to start off the new year. Uh, DAI denomination and ETH denomination split is still uh, in favor of DAI with about 95% of cover sold in DAI denomination, 5% in ETH. For fees earned, it's 82% DAI and about 18% ETH denomination. So I'm looking forward to reviewing the cover sales for next week. Um, so far, the new year is starting out strong with demand for coverage. Going over active coverage by cover type. So all of this is also sourced from the Nexus Tracker. Um, I will provide a breakdown of active coverage by uh, product type. I can do that in Discord later today uh, with a third of some of the graphics, but this is an overview of total active coverage uh, by cover type. So protocol cover has about 113.6 million. Custody cover, we're seeing 21.5 million in active coverage. There is 7.5 million in excess cover, about 7.56 in ETH staking cover, and about 1.8 million in yield token cover. So again, seeing pretty significant demand um, as the new year started, we're starting to see cover in ETH terms increase. Um, I think it's looking pretty a pretty strong start for the year. So, but I will share more detail on the active coverage by individual products within each of these um, a little bit later today on Discord. I wanted to just give a summary of the WNXM buyback discussion. I know Butter is on the call as well, so I will uh, definitely ask him to share some thoughts um, once I give this summary. But there's been renewed discussion around using ETH from the capital pool to buy back WNXM. WNXM, of course, um, trades at a discount to book value. Uh, this has been something that has happened for a while, but the discount has um, got a bit greater here in the last several months. So members have been discussing, you know, as started by Butter, should a buyback be executed? If so, how much capital should be allocated? How should the execution be handled? And does this impact the tokenomics revamp project? Some of the requirements in mind are engineering resources, of course, a portion of the capital pool, uh, where it falls in the priority over other development tasks, and then how um, execution is managed over time. There has been quite a bit of discussion on the forum. I know that um, Vincent and Butter have weighed in, as well as Dopey from the Investment Hub. Um, I've shared some of my thoughts. I know he was weighed in as well, but uh, I'd like to ask Butter if he'd like to share any of his thoughts on this as well, or any summary of the discussion on the forum. Hey. Yeah, like to summarize, I guess, um, it sort of worked back to, uh, you know, it's a good idea, but um, at the moment we're waiting for V2, so it's kind of, uh, I don't know. For me, it makes sense to buy some back early and then kind of try and, like you said, like you were saying a minute ago, manage the risk of uh, if we're going to have more people coming in externally, then uh, do we want to allocate? Our capital towards that, or do we want to allocate it towards a buyback? So for me, it's like okay, you can probably balance it, but um, it is obviously a lot of development resources, so uh, it's probably best to wait, basically, <laughs> for uh, yeah, the next uh, V2 release, and then maybe try and do the buyback then, or but yeah, I think it's probably too early at the moment um, until we know really what V2 is about. So that's a kind of summary. Yeah. 
summary. Um, but my personal opinion that I weighed in is that I, th I think it makes sense, but um, resources right now I think should be focused on V2 just because partial claims functionality is going to be really important for the upcoming claims. This could preserve some capital in the pool because for certain claims, it's likely that people didn't lose the entire amount. So paying out for actual loss versus the cover amount, uh, total cover amount as we have in the past, I think is what what I'd like to see us optimize for that also preserves some capital that could be used for buybacks in the future. Um, in my mind, the priority would be uh, the V2 rollout um, and then focusing on the new tokenomics execution um, or at least some of the resources around there. I think we could have a discussion about how much capital, but I think one of the big focuses is how much capital do we want to have as liquidity for the new tokenomics, which effectively buys back NXM um, below and up to book value, depending on the, uh, you know, the reverse Dutch auction mechanism. How much capital we want to use for that, which is essentially allowing members to exit, how much capital we would like to use to buy back WNXM if that's the direction we want to go in. And then if there's any decision about WNXM, my personal opinion is that it, if there is a buyback and we have WNXM from the buyback, there should be no decision on how it's used until after the new tokenomics are rolled out. But, um, but yeah, and I have that thought on the forum. That's my personal opinion. Um, I think there's lots of room for discussion still about this. There's plenty of time as V2 rolls out. You know, um, I think that there will be time to discuss this and then reevaluate development resources. Um, so we know that we've got boot node that's going to be work, um, going back and focusing on covered vaults uh, once they're finished helping with the uh, V2 rollout. I think there's definitely a lot happening, um, but I think it's a worthwhile discussion to have. I just think that it, it may be a bit too early, but happy to hear anyone else's thoughts as well. It seems like we, we're in a position where we're, uh, you know, obviously the development team is seems very close, so it's hard to expand on that. Um, but I do think that maybe hiring more developers somehow from somewhere would be a good idea if possible. But then obviously you have to kind of uh, double check code and do more audits and stuff. But I think, um, yeah. Yeah, I think there'll be maybe an external solution at some point as well to be able to allocate capital to and uh, like manage uh, this sort of, uh, you know, uh, DAO fund, uh, whatever you call it, management, I guess. I think there'll be something else in the future. Because I'm surprised that there's not really a solution at the moment that is simple where we can just send that money and uh, get, you know, in a decentralized way, WNXM. Because it's held yeah. in the, the capital pool contract, which isn't, there's not an easy way to send things because things can't be sent out unless they go through governance. And then there are certain things that need to be done so that that capital isn't just missing from the capital pool since that impacts how um, the NXM token is priced with the capital model. So accounting for that, having an oracle that feeds back to the capital pool, where that capital is, how much it is, you know, things along those lines. So it's a, it's a little bit more complex than sending it somewhere, executing, and then sending any remaining funds back and, and things like that. So um, that's where the development resources come in, and there isn't any solution that doesn't require some kind of uh, development um, work. But, um, but yeah, I mean, in the last several months, there have been uh, new engineers hired to everything. So... V2 is is a pretty big update, and uh, I think once that's rolled out, then there can be a re, um, an evaluation of what we want to focus on. But yeah, so if there's no uh, further discussion on here, you can find this on the governance forum as well. Uh, that is in the thread for today's call. Um, I'm going to move on to just an update and status report on the M11 credit weak pool deposit. Um, this is the same update that was on the forum as of the 23rd of December. Um, the next update should be coming within the next week. Um, I know that that Dow investment team is expecting information the next week. And once they receive that, they'll provide um, a further update in the forum thread.
the most recent update we have is that um, Maple and M11 airdrops uh, a little over 14,500 uh, Maple tokens to the Enzyme Vault. This was from some of the first loss capital that was reserved for the Weath Pool. So that is some capital we have. I don't know what the dollar value of that is, is on today's value, but probably around maybe 45 to 50,000. From the Dow investment team update that was shared on that day as well, withdrawing funds right now would incur a significant penalty of about 52%. This is due in part to the fact that the orthogonal loans have been defaulted. So that means they're to zero. And the Oros loans have been impaired. Um, the expected recovery rate based on previous information is still expected to be high, but when something is impaired in Maple V2, it's either 100% or it's zero. So because it's zero, if you withdraw from the pool now, you would get a uh, pro rata share of the capital in there based on your tokens. So withdrawing now would result in about a 52% penalty. If capital is left in for longer and Oros um, makes for payment, then that, of course, can be um, redeemed. But withdrawing early would um, incur a pretty significant penalty. And then if anyone else leaves ahead of us, they would incur this penalty, but there would be slightly more funds um, that we could recoup. So if you leave the pool now, you won't get any relief when uh, Oros provides repayment to the pool. The most profitable path at the moment is to remain in the pool and continue with the workout plan. Um, and the expected recovery rate on Oros loans uh, still remains high from the uh, Dow investment team side um, as of the latest update. I am waiting on them to get more information and provide an update, but that's where we stand at the moment. Um, of course, there's a, a more in-depth update on the forum, but I just wanted to highlight that on the call as well. Now I'll move to the open forum. So if there's anyone that has any questions or wants to discuss anything related to the mutual that I haven't covered um, or anything that they have to talk about at all, uh, the floor is yours. Feel free to bring up anything or ask any questions. Well, if there are no other questions, I can wrap things up for today. So um, thank you for joining us on today's call. There's a lot to be excited for in the next month. Uh, very much looking forward to V2 going live, and I'm sure you are all as well. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week, and look for some of those announcements later this week about the um, contact and cruel for proof of loss and some of the active coverage by cover type in more detail. Uh, have a great week, and we will see you on the call in two weeks.